Hi everybody, thanks for tuning back in. I appreciate you joining me again. I do realize it's been a while, um, a long while since I uploaded a video. And um, I wanted to give you guys an update and uh, let you know what's going on. Uh, first thing is, is uh, I am completely cancer free. Um, at least as far as my last PET scan went. Um, no tumors at all. Uh, I had my last PET scan in February. Uh, here's a graphic of every, what everything looked like uh, for the PET scan. What you're going to see is on the left-hand side is what it looked like in November of 2019 when I was first diagnosed, what, what my PET scan looked like. Uh, that big white blob there that you see in the middle, that is my, that is my tumor. And um, on the right, same exact area, except now there is no tumor. So things are going great. Um, I really couldn't ask for a, a better prognosis, a better outcome. Swallowing is still a little difficult. Um, I'm still doing some exercises for swallowing. Um, I have tinnitus, extremely bad. In fact, I actually have about 60% hearing loss in my, my right ear. Um, it's permanent. Nothing that, uh, can be done about it except hearing aids, which I'm still looking into. Uh, hearing aids nowadays are about the price of a used Hyundai. And so really can't afford it, but yeah, we're working through it. Uh, also... Since I've lost a lot of weight, I have a few gallbladder issues that I have to get taken care of. I'm going to be going into, probably going into surgery here in the next month or two to get that uh, removed. So, but all in all, I can't complain. Things are going great. Um, <clears throat> second reason for my video is um, April is Head and Neck Cancer Awareness Month. And... I have been, f um, um, I have been posting facts and symptoms and uh, things that you can do to help prevent uh, head and neck cancer and help get an early diagnosis. Um, head and neck cancer uh, accounts for about 4% of all the cancers in the United States. Um, so this year, an estimated 66,000 people, over a little over 66,000 people will be diagnosed with a majority of those being men, about 48,000 of those being men. Um, and um, unfortunately, about 14,600 people, both men and women, will die from this disease because of delayed treatment. And we don't want to see that. We don't want to see that ever again. Um, as I said, although it does affect both men and women, uh, men are twice as likely to be, a be, to be diagnosed with head and neck cancer at some point in their life. Um, multiple risk factors in increase your chances of getting head and neck cancer. Uh, of course, uh, smoking um, or using smokeless tobacco uh, increases those risks. Uh, as well as heavy alcohol use. And um, in my case, uh, HPV infection, human papilloma virus infection, an infection that probably happened to me when I was in my teens um, that just now manifested itself uh, in the last year and a half. Um, Now, the problem with head and neck cancer is that the symptoms um, are often mimic other illnesses. So strep throat, um, ear infections, uh, sinus infections, um, <clears throat> things like that. They can mimic those symptoms. So your doctor is going to probably start eliminating those things first. Now, the problem with that, um, and obviously, I mean, you, you can't fault the, the doctors. The doctors are going to do what they think is right and what's not going to cost you thousands of dollars in, in treatment. 
Um, they're first probably going to treat you for an ear infection or strep throat, something like that, give you some antibiotics. Um, in my case, those didn't work, obviously, so they gave me some prednisone, some steroids, to see if the inflammation, the swelling would go down. Maybe there was some inflammation or swelling that um, could be taken care of with some prednisone, and, well, obviously, that didn't work either. So your doctor's going to uh, work through that as quickly as they possibly can, um, <clears throat> but sometimes diagnosis and treatment can take months, which can delay your treatment and um, increase your probability of more severe disease. So there's a few things that you can watch out for in order to um, be aware and talk to your doctor. Uh, the first thing that uh, you're really going to want to look for is uh, a, a lump. Uh, of any sort. Um, this could be a hard lump, a soft lump, um, with or without pain, somewhere in the nose, the throat. Um, in my case, it was in the right tonsil back here, and it grew so big that it actually took my esophagus and, and narrowed it down. So um, a persistent sore throat. Uh, if you look back at my videos, um, click here if you want to look at my journey. Uh, from the very beginning, but if you look back at some of my videos, uh, my first videos, uh, you'll 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 see that I had a lot of these symptoms. Uh, a persistent sore throat. Woke up around my birthday um, in 2019 and had some uh, a sore throat that wouldn't go away. Uh, tried everything. Tried the lozenges. I tried some hot tea, and then I went into the doctor and went through that whole rigmarole. So a persistent sore throat is a big red flag. If you're having some tr trouble swallowing, which I was, because obviously my esophagus was narrowed down enough to where I couldn't swallow food. Um, so, so trouble swallowing, difficulty swallowing, um, some uh, called dysphagia. Uh, that's a, a big red flag. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, frequent coughing, uh, because you've got a growth back here in your throat that's causing irritation, so you're going to start coughing more. Um, a change in your voice or, or hoarseness. Uh, one thing that uh, I remember is when I would first wake up in the morning, my voice would be extremely low. I can't even get that low anymore. Um, but yeah, so there was an extreme uh, change in my voice. Ear pain uh, with mine. I had the tumor right here, so the eustachian tube was being cut off and so it felt like I had a constant itch back there and felt like I had an ear infection. Uh, headaches, um, yeah, headaches like you wouldn't believe. I had headaches all the time and I always thought that they were from stress because they weren't, you know, sinus and they weren't, you know, um, necessarily all up in here. They were all kind of back through my jaw and, and right through here and that's where my headache would start. So. <clears throat> that's that was another red flag that you know, and now that I look back everything started adding up I also had some uh, difficulty when I was chewing where I would chew I'd be chewing you know just, just a, a taco or you know just something a burrito something that was soft that didn't really require a lot of chewing but I would notice that I would have jaw fatigue where it would just feel like my jaw was too tired to continue to chew strange very strange. A um, couple um, big telltale signs are red or white sp spotches in your mouth, on your tongue, roof of your mouth, under your tongue, in your lip. Um, I'll be going over a self-exam uh, that you can do in the next video. Um, <clears throat> some things that you can, you can do to kind of be self-aware and bring up any concerns to your doctor. That'll be part of it. Um, if you're having some halitosis, some bad breath that um, is unexplained because you do brush and floss regularly, that could be a, a, a red flag. Um, cons consistent obstruction or um, congestion in your sinus cavities, not necessarily in the chest, but in your sinus cavities if you're having a hard time getting all that cleared out. Um, not necessarily uh, something to be concerned with by itself, but coupled with all these other symptoms, maybe it's time to talk to your doctor. 
Uh, if you have some frequent nosebleeds, uh, that was another thing that I had. I had I, my nose would bleed just out of the blue. Um, now, I don't know if that was necessarily related to my cancer because my cancer is right here in my tonsil, but um, I'm sure it, it it didn't help matters any. So some of the things that you need to uh, to look out for. Now, in my next video, I am going to show you, walk you through a, a self-examination on, um, on how to check yourself for anything unusual. Um, if anything arises that is of concern to you, please make sure you contact your doctor and uh, get uh, the, the help that you need. Because again, early diagnosis is going to be your best chance at preventing severe or radical medical intervention. So looking at the, uh, looking at the clock on this video, looks like I'm uh, about 12 minutes in. So I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. I do appreciate you watching. Um, thanks for subscribing. Uh, if you would like to have more information about uh, head and neck cancers, I've included a few links down in the description. I also have a link to my Facebook as well as my Instagram pages. Um, and I'm now on TikTok. So go ahead and follow me on those other platforms as well. Um, I love you guys. Thanks for watching and keep the prop side up.